Now in its fifth model year, Chevrolet makes some subtle updates to its fleet popular compact, the Chevrolet Cruze. Let's take a look at this 2015 diesel model and see if it has what it takes to take on stall with players like the Honda Civic and Toyota Corolla. Now Chevy hasn't had the best reputation for building a vehicle in the compact economy car class. Previous offerings such as the Cavalier and Cobalt simply weren't up to par with the best offerings from Japan, Korea, and its other American stablemates. That brings us to the Chevrolet Cruze name. Now this vehicle was introduced as a replacement for the lackluster Cobalt back in 2010 as a 2011 model. Now throughout the years, Chevy made very minor updates, but for 2015, the company gave the car a somewhat of a bigger refresh. You can see my particular tester is an all new model. Now this model was actually introduced last year, the turbo diesel model or the Cruze diesel. Now this actually sits at the hierarchy of the Cruze line. It also represents the most interesting offering in the lineup as it's the first American diesel passenger car car that GM has offered in God knows how many years now. Now it goes head to head with the Stallworth player, the Volkswagen Jetta TDI, and that is the diesel entry that everybody know, knows and it's been on the market for years. Now um, the Cruise, like I said, got a pretty subtle refresh for 2015. You can look at the front end of the car. Most models except the base L will have these LED daytime running lights. Uh, they are somewhat tacked on at the lower part of the bumper. They don't look like it's flushly integrated like some of the other competitors. Now, every cruise will have these halogen headlights. Uh, there are no projector or HID headlights even available on this car, just showing you that it's an older design. Now, coming around the side, the cruise has the familiar proportions of a compact car. Uh, it's about 181 inches long, 105 inch wheelbase, about the size, a little bit longer than in your typical Honda. Honda Civic. Now this diesel model has these 17 inch wheels that are specific to the diesel. Uh, they are sort of an aerodynamic design. The Cruise Eco will have a similar uh, wheel. Now there is an RS Sport package that you can get on the gasoline um, LT and LTZ. Unfortunately it's not available on the uh, Cruise Diesel. Now coming around the back of the vehicle it has somewhat of a very vanilla look. Now it's very conservative which means it'll appeal to most people in this class since you're not really looking for too much excitement but overall the design's kind of bland and a little bit rental car-ish to be honest. I mean in fact this this particular particular model without the RS package basically looks like I picked it off your local rental fleet. Now your only indication that I'm driving the diesel model is a subtle little uh, green TD badge, 2.0 TD badge that will give you the indication. Then of course if you listen carefully the car has the typical uh, diesel clatter. Now overall the exterior I think it's in dire need of a refresh especially considering just how handsome the new Impala and the just introduced uh, Malibu and Volt is so I'll be eager to see what Chevy has in store for us when they redesign the cruise. For now let's take take a look at the interior and see how well it's aged. Now just like the dated looking exterior, the interior of the Cruze will give you a familiar vibe. Uh, this is basically older General Motors design theme carried throughout the cabin. The seats, they look they look comfortable, but they do have somewhat of a flat, hard support to them. I don't find the seats particularly comfortable. The diesel will come standard with these uh, leather buckets uh, with heated seats uh, as standard equipment. Now stepping inside the car, uh, it has a good easy step in height. This is a compact car, you kind of expect that. Now the Cruze diesel isn't available with push button start. You can only get that on the LTZ gas model and that comes standard. So here's GM's flip, 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 blade, flip blade traditional key fob. You do have to stick the key in the ignition. You will hear the traditional GM bong and of course the gauges have that older uh, green, green backlit and font that uh, GM's are known for. And starting the car up, you will hear the diesel clatter from the two liter turbo diesel engine, which is not of GM's design. This actually comes from a Fiat. It's a Fiat designed engine. So it's interesting uh, where GM got the technology from. Now shutting the door, uh, the door has somewhat of a hollow noise to it when you shut it. It doesn't have that solid thunk that some of its competitors offer. The window is actually automatic uh, down for all four, but only the driver window is automatic up. I kind of think that's silly of them to only make the driver auto up, at least make the front passenger auto up as well. Now looking at the rest of this interior, um, 
Um, it's a clean design. Now, it's not necessarily my taste. For example, I hate this fabric material here that looks like it looks like a pair of the same material that you'd find on stockings, for example. It just it feels scratchy. It feels cheap. Uh, it is slightly padded. The rest of the dashboard materials are hard touch plastic. The graining is nice, though. This hood, this driver or instrument panel hood, though, is pretty cheap. Um, the plastic feels flimsy. It doesn't always fit particularly well. The door panels, they're hard touch plastic on the upper portions here. It is slightly padded right here uh, where your elbows are going to rest. More of that weird uh, stocking material on the door panels as well. Now, looking at the center stack here, um, every cruise diesel will come with the Chevrolet MyLink, the seven inch touchscreen display. Uh, this is a touchscreen, even though it looks like it's a little too far. You can also control it from the buttons here. Um, the layout here, the buttons are decently labeled, but it doesn't seem very logical to me. Uh, uh, this controller knob here, the buttons are way too small, so most of the times I find myself using the touchscreen. And then, of course, my particular tester has the uh, Pioneer audio system, which sounds completely aftermarket. It just completely distorts the bass, especially, or the, the notes or the music whenever you turn the volume up. Now, a six-speed automatic transmission comes standard on the cruise diesel. This is actually a different six-speed automatic versus the gas models. The other ones are built by GM. This comes from ASIN. Um, it's your only transmission choice. There's no manual like the Jetta TDI uh, when you put this in reverse uh, you do have a backup camera that gives you trajectory uh, parking sensors as well it does have rear cross traffic alert so it's nice that uh, Chevrolet gives that to you now looking at the center stack here uh, or the um, Chevrolet my link let's go to the home page here you can see here you have uh, your tra your traditional apps that Chevy gives you going back to the home page you have your you know your music navigation phone you have Pandora stitcher this car also has the wire the 4g LTE hotspot the rolling hotspot so it's nice that GM gives you that especially at the compact car level um, over although the buttons for example trying to get to that it's just really small you have to deal with this big surround it's just not very intuitive so I'm not really liking the layout of this now when you go to the map screen you can see um, most of the times I forgot this car actually had navigation the map screen actually looks decent this is actually a nicer looking screen than what you'll find in uh, some of its competing vehicles but again the screen does look a little bit small and it's a little bit harder to use the touchscreen portion uh, just because it's so buried into the dash now I'm um, looking at the rest of the center stack here You'd have a hand brake or hand parking brake here, some nice storage. Some of the knobs in here just feel really flimsy and cheap, so I'm not really a fan of using some of the controls here. For example, you know, the heated seat control, just that feels really loose and cheap. This is older GM interior, whereas the newer designs have gotten a little bit more upscale and a little bit higher quality finishes. The armrest right here does slide forward. Um, it does slightly adjust. It's, it could be more padded, especially at the price point for the cruise diesel. Uh, but you can see here your USB. You have another power outlet in there. Somewhat small storage, cup holders right there. Uh, the sunroof is part of a sun, uh, sound and sun package for about $1,300. It gives you that crappy sounding Pioneer audio system. I mean, overall, I think the interior of this car needs some work. It definitely needs to uh, up the material quality and uh, some of the um, controls here could be rethought as well for the next generation. Now looking at the back seat of the Chevrolet Cruze, it's also on the tight side, especially when you compare it to its main rival, the Volkswagen Jetta TDI, which gives you a huge back seat. It's basically mid-size class. Now this car will not let you forget that you're in a compact car. Uh, the leg room is pretty tight. This is where I'd have it to drive. There's good foot space underneath there, but the seat cushion feels pretty flat. It doesn't really provide that much support. Um, there is an armrest back here, surprisingly, with some cup holders the seats they do fold down a 60 40 split uh, but when you shut the door here the materials they're all hard touch plastic and it's even hard touch right there where your elbows are going to rest now looking at the trunk capacity the cruise diesel has a pretty good sized trunk it's a tad smaller than the gas model just because the floor is a little bit higher on the diesel to make room for the um add the add blue uh, solution for the diesel uh, exhaust system the admission system but you're looking at about 13.3 cubic feet of space there is no spare tire on this car since there's no room for it so you will have a fixed a flat kit but overall the trunk capacity is uh, decent for the class the cruise diesel you're gonna find a pretty unique engine especially for an American compact passenger car this is uh, Chevrolet's two-liter turbo diesel uh, four-cylinder engine 
Uh, it is actually built uh, somewhat by Fiat. It's a Fiat sourced engine in terms of its parts. Uh, the numbers are decent for a 2 liter, 151 horsepower and uh, 264 foot pounds of torque. Of course, it's that torque number that's what makes diesels so interesting. Uh, it does have an overboost function where this car will make about 280 foot pounds of torque. So it does have more power than what you're going to get in the Golf TDI or the Jetta TDI. Now, fuel economy, that's really what you're more interested in. Uh, this car is rated at 27 in the city and 46 on the highway, of course, on diesel fuel. It only comes with front-wheel drive and that six-speed automatic transmission. The fuel economy numbers are a tad better than the gas engine. If you guys go for a Cruise Eco with a six-speed manual with the gas engine, uh, that's actually rated at about 28 city, 42 highway. So really, um, this car doesn't really get that better gas mileage versus the Cruise Eco. Uh, and this car is about $2,500 more versus the, the, the uh, gasoline power car. But so far, let's get on the road. Let's take a look and see how this uh, diesel engine performs with the automatic transmission. Now, I've driven the gasoline cruise several times, especially if I happen to get one as a rental. However, I haven't had much seat time uh, in the diesel model. And when this car came out last year, it intrigued me. I was very proud of Chevy for offering the diesel model. So let's take a look and see if it was worth it for them to bring this car to the U.S. Now, first setting off in the cruise diesel, my initial impressions are quite positive. Um, the, the turbo diesel engine, I love, I mean, you guys know me, I love diesels. I had that Audi A3 TDI, uh, and this car sort of reminds me of it. The transmission definitely doesn't shift as quickly as VW's dual clutch, but um, it works decently well on the cruise, and it's a very relaxed commuter car if that's what you're looking for. Now, if you guys are looking for something a little bit more fun to drive, and if you're hoping that this is more fun to drive than the gasoline cruise, I hate to say it, but you're gonna be sadly uh, disappointed. This car still pretty much drives like a cruise. The steering is pretty numb. It's pretty light. It's somewhat precise, but the car doesn't really inspire much confidence. You feel the body lean. You feel the skittish nature of the semi-independent rear suspension. And this car tends to crash over bumps uh, in the crappy areas here, just because it doesn't have a fully independent rear suspension. I mean, overall, the impressions that you're gonna get is the car feels very stable it's just not very fun it's a little bit on the bland side to be honest the uh, even the diesel model now when you are kind of driving the car normally and using it as a commuter car um, the seats they are a little bit hard for my taste so you guys need to make sure you drive this car and uh, find out if you like the seats the visibility in here is good though you have good side, large side mirrors you have a nice clear view of the road the hood's nice and low there's a good view out of the back because this car doesn't have any of that you know swoopy um, stylistically challenged design language that some of its other uh, competitors have such as the Hyundai Elantra but overall um, what really bothers me about this car is the transmission just like the gasoline cruise GM really tuned this transmission to favor fuel economy so uh, what you're gonna feel when you're accelerating is noticeable turbo lag and a reluctance for the transmission to put the power down uh, and you just every time I floored this car I could literally count like one two and then it would finally take off and when it did um, the sort of the mid-range torque it will surge you forward but it's just not a very smooth delivery uh, such as the Volkswagen Jetta TDI now going around corners, you're definitely going to feel the, the steering's pretty numb responses. The cruise just feels very, very um, unconspiring. The, the tires will go into understeer pretty quickly. Uh, the steering has very little feedback to it. Um, and you basically find yourself slowing down around corners, which is not what, if it's, what its main competitors are. The Golf is really fun around corners. The Mazda 3 is really fun around corners. The Ford Focus is really fun around corners. And for this type of class of vehicle, I really prefer the car to inspire a little bit more confidence because this is kind of a boring car. Uh, so it's really important for me uh, that it handle very well. And this car, it's just a little bit on the average to bland side. Now, when you do have the turbo spooling and the transmission decides to give you all the power, uh, expect a zero to 60 time for this car about eight and a half seconds, which it's pretty class competitive. It's about the same as a Volkswagen Jetta TDI. However, the Jetta TDI um, feels faster than eight and a half seconds. The reason being, it's that dual clutch transmission, it's quick responses, um, it's less, or lesser turbo lag when you put your foot down. So the Jetta will feel faster and more fun to drive. Although if you guys line the two cars up, they're gonna be roughly the same. I mean, with a diesel, you don't wanna rev the snow 
snot the, the snot out of this thing like you would uh, for some, the other four cylinder engines in the class. Uh, the best range of power is between two to 3,500 RPM, and that's really where you're gonna feel the meat of the torque this diesel engine offers. Now coming up to the conclusion of this review, I have to say the cruise has left me pretty disappointed. Uh, I was never really impressed with the gasoline cruise, to be honest, but I was hoping this diesel model would add a, in, like a injection of youth and just excitement to the cruise lineup, and it really has it for me. The, the, in the combination with the laggy engine response, the laggy, frustrating transmission, which by the way, if you want to put it into manual mode, it will constantly give you a shift denied icon uh, in the instrument cluster when you're trying to shift this car at the proper times as it tends to hunt for gears and uh, stay in its top gear all the time, so it will annoy you. And then the combination with that, all the hard seats, the cheap interior, uh, the lack of you know soft touch materials here and there, I find the cruise pretty underwhelming, so I will be pretty happy to see a GM redesign this car in the coming years as it really needs it in order to keep up with uh, vehicles like the Honda Civic, the Mazda 3, the Volkswagen Jetta, Golf. Uh, this car really could use a refre refresh to make it more uh, competitive. Now, coming to the um, fuel economy of this car, I've, had, I've been driving this car for a week and, and I'm a little underwhelmed with the gas mileage too. I mean, around town, this car really doesn't get better gas miles versus its gasoline uh, counterpart. I averaged about 25 miles per gallon on diesel in around town driving. Now, when I got up on the interstate, I got about 45 miles to the gallon. So that's pretty good numbers on the highway. However, I had a Mazda 6 uh, earlier this week as well, and that's just got the four-cylinder gas engine. And I got about 42 on the highway in that, so really only three miles per gallon better than the diesel. I would probably just take the gas model, the Gas Eco uh, Cruise, for example. It saved myself a pretty good chunk of change. Now, speaking of the price, the Cruise diesel is pretty expensive. Uh, a base gasoline Cruise L starts at about $17,000. The diesel starts $10,000 more than that. The base price for one is about $26,500. Now, if you compare that to uh, the Jetta TDI, that car starts at about $5,000 less. It's about $21,500 for that car. Now, the Cruise does have a little bit more standard equipment. If you guys want to match a Jetta up with a Cruise in terms of equipment, you got to go for the SE with connectivity. That's about $25,000, which still makes the Cruise about $1,500 more expensive than the Jetta, and it's about $2,500 dollars more expensive than a comparable gasoline 2LT cruise. Now, my particular tester has a couple options on it. It's got the convenience package for 400 bucks that adds a backup camera, the sun and sound package that adds the sunroof from the Pioneer Audio, and then a safety package that gives you blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, um, and parking sensors for about 800 bucks. All in, my tester is about just over $29,000, and that's basically my issue with the car. It's an almost $30,000 cruise, and the interior is cheap, the seats are hard, the performance is not left me wanting for a better transmission or a manual and a less turbo laggy engine. Also, the refinement of this engine, it's, it sounds like a diesel at times for me. Uh, the audible noise that it makes just doesn't, ha doesn't trick you to think you're driving a gasoline car the way Volkswagen's uh, turbo diesel engine will. But anyways, if you guys are in the market for an American diesel compact car, the Cruze is really your only choice. Um, and you know, there is a $1,500 rebate right now that GM has out that will lower the price of this car. But to be honest, I really think that you should take a look at the Volkswagen Jetta or Golf TDI first, as I personally think it's a better choice uh, versus going for this car, and then wait for GM to uh, redesign the Cruze as the entire lineup is getting pretty uh, pretty stale and uh, old. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed my overview of this 2015 Chevrolet Cruze diesel. If you're looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram, like us on Facebook, subscribe to the YouTube channel so I can keep giving you guys more reviews. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll catch you all in the next video.